In this lesson, we will look at the scientific method. The scientific method really is a systematic process of discovering new laws in physics. So uh, we will look at this in great detail. So please pay attention. Understand that natural philosophy is the precursor to science. It is a body of knowledge accumulated through the philosophical study of nature and the physical universe. Science per se is more than just a body of knowledge. As a matter of fact, it is a way of thinking inspired by a systematic approach to understanding the universe that uses observable, testable, repeatable, and falsifiable experimentations to understand how the nature behaves. Let me ask you an important question. Have you ever wondered how you come to know some of the things you know? For example, if you touch the metal handle of a door, it feels cold. But if you touch the door itself, it feels warm. So the question I want to ask you is, are they at the same temperature? How do you know? It is not a good idea to jump off a tall building or maybe to run into a street without looking for oncoming traffic. Going back to the question earlier about the door handle. Is the handle and the door really at different temperatures? Suppose you are a passenger in a convertible moving along a straight road, maybe on a windless day, and you throw a basketball up. Would you expect the ball to land back in the vehicle? or in front of the vehicle or behind the vehicle. Let me give a common example. You are t you, let's say you take a vacation and you and your family are driving across town or across country and you so happen to collide with a bark or for example, a fly or maybe even a bird, which is a common occurrence in the summer. So the question is, during collision between your car and the bird, which one exerts a greater force on which? Is it the bird or your car? How do you know? Ultimately, what guides your decision-making processes? How do you know what you know? And how do you know that what you know is correct anyway? This brings us to one point. There are many ways to acquire knowledge. Each has its advantages as well as disadvantages. Let me pause here for a minute and clarify this. Science is both a body of knowledge, a way of thinking, as well as a systematic process through which that knowledge is acquired. Now, I am a teacher. I love what I do. I love to teach. You know, to do what I do now, to inform 
people and educate people to make the right choices so as to live a better life. That is what I believe is my calling in life, to help you make a better you so that you can actually enjoy life and live a meaningful and a purposeful life. Therefore, as a teacher, you as a student, most often you accept information from me as true. Maybe because you respect and trust that what I am saying is true. We all know that this approach to knowledge is the most common, but it comes with a big price tag. It comes with its own disadvantages. We call this approach to knowing as authority. In other words, when you listen to someone in a position above you, the information you get is coming from a position of authority. Understand that when we depend on authority figures to tell us what is true or what is incorrect, we have to trust that they have carefully evaluated all the evidence with the best of interest in mind. We have, history has actually shown us that this is not always the case. And relying on authority can actually lead us to accept facts as truths and truths as fact or completely or incomplete information. The experiences we have with the physical world through our interactions with it also help us to develop mental models of how the world works, without which we would not be able to understand our experiences. Now, before I dive a little bit ahead of me, it is important for you to understand that one way through which we acquire information is authority. 